Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm actually going to show you how to use the Unity Debugger with Visual Studio Code. I'm actually going to show you how I use it in my own game, the game that I'm working on right now, how we can set up a breakpoint, how we can actually use the Watcher, the Debug Console, to get some extra information that we really need when we're trying to find an issue with our game or we simply want to find out what's going on with the code. So let's actually jump into Unity and start using it. All right guys, so here's the game that I've been building for the Magic Leap. And I'm gonna show you how to actually use Visual, Visual Studio Code to debug the game. So if I hit play, a lot of the things that I have here are dynamically generated. So you'll see how most of the managers get generated automatically. If I hit play and I can go and select the level, a lot of this is it hasn't been finalized, so this is a lot of a lot of it is just mock-up UI. So if I select level one, it basically loads everything for level one. And what I want to show you is how we can actually debug what's going on, and, and specifically with the inventory that I have. So for instance, in this level, I have basically ten different cranes that I can use. I have two bombs and I have seven dynamites. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and jump into Visual Studio Code. And if you haven't looked at the video that I posted on the previous session, make sure that you do. And if you haven't, all you need to do for this session is basically download the extension for the Unity Debugger. I already installed it, but if you haven't, just search for Debugger for Unity and then install that component which is from unity technology so this is the official debugger and just click on install and then reload and then once you do that you should see the disable which means that it has been already installed once you do that you're basically just going to go to the debugger option and if you don't see this option as a unity editor you'll need to click on the basically on this settings icon and then that's going to ask you if you want to use the unity debugger and just select that and then once you do that you'll see the Unity Editor as an option. So once you do that, all you really have to do is just click on play. So the first thing you wanna make sure that your game is playing, which is, you know, I, I have Unity in that mode already. So play your game and then simply just click on this Unity Editor in the play button. And then once you do that, you'll see the debug console is gonna say initializing, searching for Unity process and then if it's successful, it's going to say attach to Unity process. So it looks like mine already attached. So the other thing that I that I am going to do here is I want to know when um, I'm basically loading the data. So I'm looking, I'm actually going to go into level. Let's actually go back into all files. I actually want to look at the inventory manager. So open, you know, the, the source code that you want to debug, and then you can basically add a debugging a breakpoint just like you do on every other IDE. So for, for the one that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically just add a breakpoint to this use inventory method. And the way that this inventory method works is you pass in, I pass in the selected item that, I, that I'm basically using and selecting from the UI. And then also a callback, which is gonna be the action that is gonna refresh my inventory. Then once I pass in that information, I basically say, okay, give me the item that I selected from my current inventory. And then, you know, as long as I, as long as I have the quantity in the inventory greater than zero, then I decrement the quantity. Otherwise, I just set it to zero. And then I do a callback, which in this case is going to be the refresh inventory method. So let's actually see this in action. So I'm going to go back into Unity. And the way that my game works is I, I basically need to destroy this structure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna place a dynamite. So I'm gonna select it and place it somewhere. So as soon as I place it, I'm telling the, the game that I'm gonna use that item from the inventory. And if I, if I hover over it because I'm debugging, I can see the bomb is the selected item. I can also look at what the what the results are. So if I wanna look at my current level inventory, you can see that I can see an array. I can actually just expand. So the debugger is really powerful because I can actually see that this is a list. I have six items and it's an array and I have all my inventory entities in there. I can also see that I don't have a cannon. I don't have a bulldozer. I don't have people in my inventory. 
and I do have seven bumps, so that reflects what we see on the UI. The, the other thing that is also cool is that you can do a lot more things with this. So if I go to my debugger, I can actually look at my local variables. So if I want to see what this is, which is, you know, the instance that we're currently looking at, I can look at, you know, just like, look, like what I did with the current level inventory, I could also look at it in here. I can look at, I can expand it, I can collapse it. If I don't want to look at that, I can collapse the whole thing. I can look and see if this game object is set to enable, which it is. I can also look at the game object class object by itself and then look at everything that is being set. So I have access to every single thing that I have here. I can also look at my callback. So I can either hover over the variable here and say, okay, what is the callback method that is going to be called? Is the refresh inventory, is of type void, and I can dig in and look at more information about it because this is doing reflection behind the scenes and it's giving me all the information. So the other thing that is cool is I can also add a watch. And what that means is I can actually add expression. So I can say selected, selected item, which in this case is gonna be the variable that is getting passed in. And I can look at the value of that. I could also do the same thing with the callback. I can see, oh, this is a callback and I can see all the different options that I just, it's the same information that I can see if I hover over it. But you might not want to see everything. I might just want to see, you know, just a property about it. So I could say selected item, the quantity, quantity, and then hit enter. So if that it's not, if that is not a property that is available, so let me see. So if I basically select this and go to definition, I can look and see. Okay, this is actually an enumeration that I'm passing in. So let's actually know the class itself. So if we go back to the inventory manager and what I wanna look at is actually the entity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step over because what we're doing here, we're saying, okay, look in my inventory, look at all the items that are of type bomb. And then that's gonna give me basically the entities that I have. So if I hover right now, because I step over, now I got my entity back. So if I go back into the debugger, I can actually see if I go here and I type in entity, that quantity, I can see that the quantity is seven, or I could simply say entity, and that's gonna give me the entire object. The other thing that is cool about these is I can actually use the debug console and I could say, okay, I wanna know what the entity information is and I can actually expand it here. So this is really, really flexible. You have, you know, you can actually expose information for a ver from a variable from the debug console. You can add a watcher, or you can look at all the variables through the variable pane. So there's a lot of information that you're seeing on the debugger. The other thing that I can also see, I can look at all the breakpoints that I have assigned. So I have the level data manager, I have a breakpoint there, and it tells me which line the breakpoint is on. I also have the inventory manager, I have a breakpoint on line 36. So if we, if we scroll down, we can see that you know, line 36 actually has a breakpoint associated with it. If I remove it, you can see that it automatically, it's gonna refresh. So this is really, really powerful. So the other thing that I can do is you have all these different options in here where you can, I can hit play and go basically to the next, the next line that has a breakpoint, or I could either step over, I can step into or step out. So if I go back into the game, and let's say that I add another, so I added a bomb, a dynamite, and let's actually add the dynamite now, which is a grenade, that's what I call it. And if I step over, I can step over into that, I can step over into that. What if I wanted to step into that callback? So I could actually just click on step into or F11. So you can see that if you hover over it, it's gonna tell you the hotkey to access that. The same thing with step out, and then the same thing with step over and to continue just simply F5. So I can step over, I can step over one more time. I could do that as well. So the, the reason why you see these evaluate request fail is because these are outside of the context. So the watcher is the way that it works. It's gonna evaluate, you know, based on the context that you, where you're on. So if you have a variable within this method that was called selected item, then that will evaluate to true. So the other thing that I can do here is I could simply 
just right click on it and then remove all expressions and it'll basically clear it out all the watchers that I have and I could just simply create a new one so this could be granite and then entity and then you can see that that now evaluates to true because I do have a variable in here that, that basically matches that so the other thing that I can do is I can simply just click on step over step over and then you can also stop it if you wanted to or you can actually restart the whole session or I can just simply hit continue and then now I'm back into the game. So it's really powerful when, when you want to debug your code. I've been using Visual Studio Community in the past and, and it works great, but I gotta tell you that Visual Studio Code is very, very fast. I don't have to really wait that much for things to compile. It's lightweight. If you're thinking about using you know, a lightweight editor that has built-in Unity Debugger, I would really recommend that you look at Visual Studio Code because it has a lot of functionality out of the box. So make sure that you look at the previous video where I go through actually you know, installing some of the extensions that I use so that you can get autocomplete. Also installing the Unity Debugger and some snippets that you can use with Unity. So that's basically what I wanted to cover in this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And don't forget to share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.